TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The swearing-in ceremony of the Israeli government has been delayed at the last minute, forcing an extension to Jerusalem's 18 months of political deadlock. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo highlights Jerusalem's freedom of action on the matter of annexation. A Palestinian ramming attack leaves one IDF soldier wounded near a Jewish West Bank settlement southeast of the city of Hebron. The Israeli government was scheduled to be formed this evening, heralding a much-anticipated end to 18 months of Jerusalem's political deadlock. Regrettably, however, following an extended delay rooted in internal political strife on the distribution of ministerial portfolios by both of the coalition's major political parties, including Premier Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud and Parliament Speaker Benny Gantz's Blue and White, as of this moment, the swearing-in ceremony has been postponed. Initially, the Israeli parliament, or Knesset in Hebrew, were scheduled to vote on the formation of a new government. After Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu had formally informed the country's head of state, President Reuven Rivlin, and separately outgoing parliament speaker Benny Gantz, that he had succeeded in forming a coalition. Due to internal political bickering over ministerial portfolios, however, the anticipated formation of the 35th government of Israel will now have to wait until probably next week. Nevertheless, sources from Netanyahu's Likud reassure TV7 that a government will ultimately form, as part of which Benjamin Netanyahu's role as the country's prime minister will be extended for another 18 months, after which Benny Gantz, who is set to serve as the new Israeli defense minister, will subsequently assume the role of prime minister for the remaining 18 months thereafter. It is important to mention that Netanyahu's government guidelines, which were published last night, focus chiefly on ways of dealing with the coronavirus crisis and do not cite the assertion of Jerusalem's sovereignty over the West Bank, which is the internationally disputed territory that includes the Jordan Valley and the biblical districts of Judea and Samaria. In related news, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo concluded his visit to Israel yesterday after meeting with Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu and separately with Parliament Speaker Benny Gantz, among other senior officials. Prior to his departure, the top American diplomat revealed that Washington grants Jerusalem freedom of action on the matter of annexation. In an interview to Israel's public broadcast Khan News, Secretary Pompeo stressed that Israel was free to act as it sees fit on the matter, while in parallel voiced hope that the Palestinian leadership would realize that the United States' vision for peace was good for the Palestinians as well. When asked about concerns that have been aired by former and current top Israeli security officials about potentially devastating repercussions of annexation, including possible implications to the peace agreement with Israel's eastern neighbor Jordan, Pompeo noted that he was not surprised that there were different opinions in Israel about asserting the country's sovereignty over the West Bank. The U.S. Secretary of State explained that voicing different opinions vis-à-vis -vis any topic is expected to happen in any democracy, as is the case in the United States. Nevertheless, Pompeo said that he was confident that the newly formed unity government in Jerusalem, which has a wide representation of different Israeli sectors, would make good decisions on how to carry out its aspired annexation. Meanwhile, alongside calls by European Union officials to advance punitive measures against the Jewish state in an apparent effort to deter Jerusalem from asserting sovereignty over what most countries within the international community had already designated as territories earmarked for a future Palestinian state, tensions have escalated in those territories in recent days after an IDF soldier from the Golani Brigade's reconnaissance unit was killed during routine operational activity. During the funeral of Sergeant First Class Amit Benigal, Israel's outgoing Defense Minister Naftali Bennett eulogized a fallen Israeli soldier who made the biggest sacrifice of all for the protection of the land and people of Israel. <laughs> עוצמה, 
תוך הקרבה. עוצמה שיודעת שאם בנינו לא יילחמו בלילות, הוריהם לא יוכלו לצעוד בבטחה בימים. עוצמה שנשאבת מעומק שורשינו כאן בארץ ישראל. While the fallen soldier was an only son to his parents, Minister Bennett asserted that all of the nation of Israel are one, a united family that mourns the heavy loss of its fallen brother. ונצח ישראל כאן בארצנו תלויים באומץ ליבם של עמית וחבריו. אף אחד מאיתנו לא מבין את דרכי אלוהים, ואין לנו מילים מנחמות לכאב הגדול, אבל יש הערצה עצומה, ואהבה לא נגמרת מעם ישראל. The top Israeli defense official further vowed not to rest until the abhorrent terrorist who dropped the deadly rock from a building's rooftop on the Israeli force is located and brought to justice. מול מוגי הלב שמתחבאים בקרב ילדים ועל גגות בתים קמים חיים חיילים גיבורים ששומרים על צלם אנוש מגנים על העם שלהם עם של אמיצים ארדוף אויביי ואשיגם ולא אשוב עד כלותם. לוחמי גולני, אתם תחזרו להילחם ולמצוא את המחבל ואת המנוול שעשה את זה ואנחנו ננצח יחד את אויבינו. Since the deadly incident took place early Tuesday morning, IDF forces, in cooperation with Israeli security agency Shin Bet, have been searching for the responsible Palestinian assailant. Numerous related operations have taken place, during which more than 20 suspects have been arrested for interrogation. Meanwhile, clashes erupted between Palestinians and Israeli troops in several locations across the West Bank, including in the village of Al-Fawal, near the city of Hebron, where an IDF raid took place as part of the ongoing manhunt. The IDF spokesperson's unit noted that the Israeli troops faced a violent riot upon entering the village. Rioters hurled rocks, Molotov cocktails and improvised explosive devices toward the Israeli force, which responded with riot dispersal means and live fire in accordance with the rules of engagement. During the reported incident, the Palestinian Health Ministry said that a 15-year-old teenager was apparently killed, while another four Palestinians sustained injuries. On the opposite side, one IDF soldier sustained light injuries. The day after the deadly incident, a funeral procession was held for the Palestinian teenager in the Al-Fawal village, during which the Palestinian crowd called for revenge against Israel. In other yet related news, a Palestinian assailant rammed his vehicle earlier today into a stationary IDF force adjacent to the Israeli Negochot community, southwest of the West Bank city of Hebron. One soldier reportedly sustained moderate injuries to the lower part of his body. He was treated at the scene by Israeli paramedics, after which he was transferred to the Soroka Medical Center for further treatment. The IDF spokesperson's unit confirmed to TV7 that the Palestinian attacker has been shot and neutralized. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7's Global Prayer Initiative, I would like to encourage you to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to pray today for the salvation and peace of Belgium, alongside our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace and salvation of Israel, as well as for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion worldwide. Furthermore, I would like to thank all of our partners for your continued support, both by means of prayer and finance. Jonathan Hassan, have an Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.